This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. First off, before I get into the video, I know you haven't seen my ugly face in a minute, but I want to start bringing these face recordings back a little bit just for the intros and the outros. I feel like it brings us to a little bit of a close connection. It creates a different, you know, a personal level of engagement. I feel like at least. Obviously, when the season starts, we're going to be rolling out NBA videos. But as of now, it's kind of just like a weird time of year where it's like not NBA and it's just like the FIBA World Cup and there's games and... I actually went to one of those games, and I also met Tim Hardaway. Who's, who's the hardest player you played against? Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh... So if you guys want to see that, I just dropped a vlog where I met Tim Hardaway. I met Alan Houston, and I watched the Australia vs US game. It was in my home city. It was in Melbourne, Australia, which is where I'm from. So if you want to go check it out, I recommend you pause this video, check out the vlog. But it was amazing. I had a great time. So thank you for you know your support because without you guys, I wouldn't be able to go. So I had an amazing time. So thank you for that. Even if you don't want to watch the vlog, I reckon you should just check out what Tim Hardaway's answer was because it was pretty interesting. And if you're an NBA fan, you probably won't expect it. So I would just, you know, check it out. I'm just saying if I was you, but you know, I'm not you. So do whatever you want. But with that said, welcome to the video. Hope you guys enjoy and let's get into it. First of all, these players are not in any order, and obviously they are all over the age of 24. I want to thank today's sponsor, CatBeast.com. If you want to make your own snapbacks and custom hats, be sure to click the link down below in the description box below. Let's get it started. At number one, Buddy Hill. When you think of Buddy Hill, you think of a guy that only entered the league a few seasons ago. In fact, three seasons ago. In the 2016-2017 NBA season, that was his time where he finally got drafted and entered the league. And it was really interesting looking back because you had Anthony Davis and Buddy Hield on the same team and Buddy Hield was older than Anthony Davis, even though Davis has been in the league since 2012. It's really interesting, but that's how it went. Buddy Hield was a mature age draft pick and at the end of the day, those guys come into the league a little bit more ready than the others, but he almost didn't. He averaged 10 points in his rookie season in 23 minutes and then he got traded to the Sacramento Kings. At the time, the Kings were in a pretty bad place. They really only had DeMarcus Cousins and apart from him it was a dire situation for the Kings. Now Vlade Divac has really transformed that team into what it is now and really developed these young guys into a contending team in the Western Conference. They finished ninth in the Western Conference which is a great achievement considering what they were in the past and it just shows how the Sacramento Kings have really transformed after the DeMarcus era and look at them now. And one of the main reasons why was obviously because of Buddy Heald. He averaged 20 points last season 2.5 assists on 88% from the free throw line, 45% from field goal, and 42% from three, which is just outstanding. Like I said before, he's not an old player, but players around 26, 27 usually reach their prime in the NBA, and that is exactly where Buddy Hield will be next season, reaching his prime because he'll be 27 years old. I believe he can have a huge jump. I think he can average next season around 25 points per game next season, which will be a huge improvement from 20 points. An increase in five points per game is not out of this world to suggest that he could average that, and I believe Buddy Hield, when watching him, he is definitely one of the most talented offensive guys in this league, and he kind of reminds me of Bradley Bill, and we saw Bradley Bill go from 17 to 23 points, and even two years ago, 22 points to 25 points last season. So I believe he can be in a similar mold to Bradley Bill, and John Wall and De'Aaron Fox are not too dissimilar at the same age. So I reckon look out for the Kings next season, and definitely watch out for Buddy Hield. At number two, Spencer Dinwiddie. The Brooklyn Nets obviously had one of the greatest offseason in NBA history. Even though Kevin Durant is injured, Getting Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, and DeAndre Jordan obviously is a huge offseason no matter what offseason it is. But obviously Kevin Durant is not on the Brooklyn Nets next season. So it's going to be up to Kyrie Irving and guys like Karis LeVert, Spencer Dinwiddie, and the rest of the Brooklyn Nets roster like DeAndre and obviously Jared Allen to perform. And I believe that they will do that, especially in the Eastern Conference, which is definitely wide open. Obviously Spencer Dinwiddie last season came off the bench. And in fact, he was one of the best to do it. Obviously, he was a six man of the year candidate, and if it wasn't for Lou Williams just being Lou Williams, Spencer Dinwiddie may have that accolade around him. I mean, he definitely performed off the bench last season. He averaged 17 points, 4.6 assists, shooting 33% from three and 44% from the field goal. That was alongside D'Angelo Russell as well. So even though the Nets have Kyrie Irving, I don't think that's going to take away from Spencer Dinwiddie. 
And with Spencer Dinwiddie being 26 next season, he could go from averaging 17 points to around 20 points next season because he only averaged 12 field goal attempts last season, he only started 4 games, and he only played 68 games last season. So Spencer Dinwiddie, with one more season and one more preseason under his belt, he may take that next step next season. I believe he can average 20 points per game. At number three, I have a pretty interesting player. I've got Norman Powell. He's obviously not a guy that we see as one of the best scorers in the league. In fact, he's far from it. He only averaged eight points last season, shooting 40% from three, which is really good, off 28% the year prior, and 48% from the field goal. He's a guy that obviously hasn't really had much of a chance in this league. He only played 60 games last year, only started three of them, only played around 19 minutes per game, and only averaged 6.7 field goal attempts. Now, the Toronto Raptors are in that interesting situation where they lost their superstar in Kawhi Leonard, but they did just come off an NBA Finals, and they did come off an NBA Championship. They still have Kyle Lowry, Serge Ibaka, Marcus Gasol. But we're going to see how those guys play together and if they can really still be a contending team in the Eastern Conference, which means that maybe at the trade deadline, Kyle Lowry may be on the move, Marcus Gasol may be on the move, Ibaka. All those guys can definitely be contributors for a team that's trying to contend in this year's NBA playoffs, which means that a guy like Norman Powell, who's pretty young at 26 years old next season, has the chance to maybe enter a starting role and develop a little bit more with some more shot attempts, which in my opinion will probably happen either way as Kawhi Leonard is not on the team anymore. We kind of assume that Pascal Siakam will replace his role, but let's say Norman Powell can improve a little bit. He could go from averaging around 8.6 points to around 12 to 14 points in my opinion. A guy that can definitely be a sole contributor off the bench, and we know that he's a pretty athletic guy and pretty solid on defense too. So in my opinion, with his shooting ability, really tells me that he could be a guy that can take that next step next season. And I feel like he's gonna average a few more minutes this season. So let's watch out for Norman Powell. At number four, Julius Randle. Next season, Julius Randle will be 25 years old. But every year that he's been in the league, he's definitely taken a leap. He showed last season that he could be a great player in this league. When Anthony Davis went down, this guy stepped up. And even when Anthony Davis was on the court and Julius Randle came off the bench, he still contributed in a huge way. He averaged 30 minutes last season on 15 field goal attempts, averaging 21, 9 rebounds, 52% from the field goal, and he even shot 34% from three, which is pretty solid for a guy that really never shot previously. Now he's playing for a new team, for a huge franchise, the New York Knicks. The spotlight will be on Julius Randle, but it's also going to be on guys like RJ Barrett, Dennis Smith Jr., Mitchell Robinson. So I think it's going to be a very young core to go to work with next season for Julius Randle, and it's going to be very interesting to watch how he plays and how the team plays. But I believe if he can go from averaging 16 points to 21 points, next season he could average around 25 points. He's a very, very unique player and he shows hustle, determination, and he shows that he can score it with the best of them. I believe that Julius Randle is going to take the next step with the New York Knicks and he's going to be one of the most improved players next season and definitely has the chance to win most improved even at the age of 25. At number five, I have Gary Harris. He's obviously an elite scorer, but he plays alongside Jamal Murray and a team that is not really built for one or two players. It's basically just built for the whole team. Jokic is super unselfish and Jamal Murray is kind of the point guard leader, but he really doesn't have the best averages. He's just the guy that you can tell will be the star alongside Jokic. Gary Harris, two years ago at 23 years old, averaged around 17 and a half points three assists, two and a half rebounds, shooting 39% from three in 34 minutes per game. Last season though, he had a decrease in not only his performance, but also the amount of minutes he was receiving. He went from 34 minutes to 28 minutes and only averaged around 13 points, shooting worse percentages of how he did in the previous season. Not to mention, this was the first ever season since his rookie year that he actually came off the bench for a few games, which really just shows the depth of the Denver Nuggets. He can be a very, very good player, I believe on a different team though. I believe the Nuggets as a whole are just an all-around good team, but I don't think that you can really be a star on this team unless you are Nikola Jokic, let's say compared to a team like the Houston Rockets. And I do believe he could still break out with the Denver Nuggets, but I would love to see him get traded just to see how his potential can match up against other shooting guards in this league. But for now, I think he can just be a very solid player, but I would love to see him break out. And I do believe he can break out in the next upcoming seasons. 
At number six, I have Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier has copped a lot of criticism in the last few months after going to the Charlotte Hornets. But it really hasn't been him copying the criticism, it's more so the Charlotte Hornets that have been copying the criticism. Considering that this video is not about where the Charlotte Hornets will finish, it's not about their record, it's going to be just about Terry Rozier, this is really his opportunity. He's going from a bench player into a starting player, he's going to be the main guy on a team, which is what he's wanted, and now he's really got the opportunity to take that next step. Terry Rozier will be 25 next season. He's going to start to reach the prime of his career and he's going to have the opportunities. Now, we've seen what Terry Rozier could be as we saw him in the 2018 playoffs at 23 years old where he managed to average 16.5 points, 1.3 steals, 5.7 assists on 82% from the free throw line, 34% from three, 40% from the field goal on 14 field goal attempts per game in 36 minutes. In my opinion, he's going to have very similar numbers in Charlotte, averaging around 16 and a half points and around six assists per game. Because we've seen that from Terry Rozier two years ago in the playoffs, I believe he's just going to have the opportunities to do that in Charlotte. So if he can go from nine points to 16 points, which is a seven point increase, he's going to be in the running for most improved. And it's just basically because he's really going to have the opportunities next season. At number seven, Karis LeVert. This guy was super unlucky last season. We all know about his injury, especially at a time where he was starting to show what he could be in this league. But he eventually came back and he still had the explosiveness and still showed that he is the same Karis LeVert before the injury occurred. So it's going to be really interesting to see how he performs next season. He just got offered a contract in which he accepted and that contract extension makes me really happy to see. It means that Kyrie, Durant, Levert and a whole bunch of other guys are going to be locked up with the Brooklyn Nets which shows that their future is looking very bright. I already talked about Spencer Dinwiddie but Karis Levert is in a very similar mold and I believe he could definitely have an increase if he stays healthy next season. I believe he could go from averaging around 13 points to maybe 17 points next season if he starts or even if he comes off the bench. So watch out for Karis Levert next season. At number eight, it's obviously the guy that really showed what he was last season in the playoffs and obviously throughout the regular season too. It's Pascal Siakam. Obviously with Kawhi Leonard leaving, the small forward position is wide open and it's wide open for this guy right here. Pascal Siakam basically had a 10 point increase last season. He went from seven points to 17 points, seven rebounds, three assists with basically one block and one steal per game. He shot 36% from the three, 54% from field goal, and that was all alongside Kawhi Leonard. I believe he could go from a 17 point scorer to maybe a 22 to 23 point scorer at 25 years of age next season for the Toronto Raptors. But from his path to the NBA and even in the NBA, he's always shown us what he is. I mean, he was an NBA D-League Finals MVP. He was a D-League champion. Then he wins the most improved player and he wins an NBA championship last season. So now that the future's here and Pascal Siakam will be 26 next year, it's going to be a very interesting time and a very interesting season next year. So let's watch out for Pascal Siakam and let's see what he can do for the Toronto Raptors. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like if you're new, follow me on Instagram and hit the notification button so you don't miss an upload. And with that said, let me know what videos you guys want to see next on this channel. If you have any ideas, any suggestions, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could comment down below. And with that said, I'm out.